Good afternoon, Stitch Roadies. Welcome to the Stitch Roadie chair <laughs> and place. Um, I have lots to share with you today. Lots to share with you today. We are in the midst of a winter weather advisory and it has been snowing non-stop since last night. But what's really fascinating to me is that we're used to big snow, big flakes. And here it has been snowing continuously since the middle of the night, but the flakes are so tiny that it is building up but at such a much smaller rate than we're used to. Like if it had been snowing this many hours in Sisters, we'd be buried. We'd be buried. But in reality here, this type of snow really shuts everything down. So there's nobody walking outside. Um, hardly anybody is driving. In fact, there's some roads in the Portland area that they've just closed. You, you can't even go on them. Because when you think about it, you know, we live on a big hill, big mountain, and um, when you only have snow once in a great while, people aren't, their cars aren't prepared for it. Like, I think there's some driveways on my street that people wouldn't even be able to get up if they went out somewhere, so they just don't go out. And um, you know, for us, we have snow tires on, and we'll continue to put snow tires on our car because the, uh, you know, we go over the mountain. We're going to be going over the mountain at a regular pace, even in the winter in an emergency if we have to. So that uh, this is quite lovely because everything has quieted down. It's made all of life slow down and not in the way that COVID has. <laughs> you know, that is like, ugh. But this is actually very lovely, uh, very lovely. I've been in my PJs all day. Yes, all day. And um, I've been stitching away and figuring out I've been binge watching floss tube let me tell you before we get started though I have had several questions about this quilt that's on the back of my chair and I thought I would share it with you it's a lovely story this is a crazy patch block quilt that was taught by Lori Thorne at um, the stitching post in sisters and um, I'm pretty sure they probably have access to this pattern. But when I made this, I was having a particularly challenging mother-daughter relationship. You know how that goes. Every so often you have challenging times in your life with a parent. And I decided to parent myself for a while. And I'm, I'm not telling you that I like wasn't speaking to my mom. There's no way that could ever have happened. But I decided to nurture myself during that period. So when I made this crazy patch block, which is what this is called, in the middle of each block I put something lovely that I wanted, um, that I wished for that I wished for. So there it says love and I embroidered love you love you and you know so each block has something special in it um, I put down uh, creative and I embroidered that into the block I embroidered into this block a blessing so that's what I did throughout the whole quilt and um, Oh, here's, I love this one. I embroidered, you are so beautiful. And it's such a warm, fuzzy quilt uh, in terms of the emotion behind it. And what I can say is that sometimes in relationships, you have to not 
expect that other person to nurture you. You need to nurture yourself. So, so that quilt has always been in our bedroom area. And it was all these different flannels. It's flannel, so it's quite lovely and cozy. So what have I been up to? I have been stitching. I have been practicing my two-handed stitching. I have done some in-hand stitching too, which I love. And for small projects, I'm going to continue doing my in-hand stitching. I did have um, an FFO. I finished my, um, this was a stitchery I did in honor of Emmett Till, who was born in 1941 and was murdered in 1955. And it's this lovely, um, you know, blackbird singing in the dead of night. And then I put his, uh, I um, stitched his name and his birth year and his death year in there. And just as a reminder that we have to stand up. So, and I put, um, I looked in my stash and I found some musical notes that I think was perfect because I can hear, I can hear the music playing. Yeah. And I know that this was, I'm, I'm pretty sure this was a free design maybe online, but I, for the life of me, can't remember. But maybe somebody else remembers um, this. But I, I loved it. And it's going to be a little um, bowl filler pillow. Yeah. Then, what else? Um see where is everything's kind of discombobulated here oh I'm almost done with my February um, ornament block but or ornament stitch the thing you have to know is that on the hashtag monthly orny sow uh, which was started by uh, Becca of Sambri stitches and Audrey uh, stitchy witch 42 and myself is that it there's no real rules to it it's for enjoyment so you don't have to do one every month you can do them as often as you want and it doesn't have to be an ornament it could be any kind of small that you want to stitch and you could turn it into an ornament or not it's up to you there's uh, no stitchy police for us so I decided that I was going to in February stitch one of um, Brenda Gervais love notes and so I'm stitching this one down here uh, be mine and I'm almost done I mean this is going to be a finish this week all I have to do is the little male bird and there we go this is stitched on 40 count. It was a scrap that I had in my stash. And I tried to stick fairly close to the call for um, DMC, but I didn't have every color. Imagine that. And so I just kind of worked, worked a little bit of flexibility into that stitch. So uh, that, that should be done by the end of today. I would think I'd be done with that. So what's been going on? Well, because I've been catching up on floss tube, I've been enabled big time. And I know that I said I wasn't going to start anything until I got stuff done. But let me tell you, you just can't watch floss tube and that uh, and have that happen. Um, everybody. Everybody just gets under your stitchy mojo and makes you want to do all the stuff. Yeah. So I decided that I was going to uh, do a Valentine start. I, I don't know how many people are doing a Valentine start, but I said, what am I going to do for a Valentine start? 
Well, I remembered I bought this um, pattern from Liz Matthews. Loved by you. And I decided I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to start it. It's not going to be like one of those stitches that takes forever, but I love it. And I'm going to do it. And so uh, I'm going to start that on Valentine's Day. Because we're going to be stuck on Valentine's Day. I, I mean, the snow's going to go on for another 24 hours or so. Then it'll take a while. You know, the thing about here, uh, well, I already told you about the difference in snowflakes. But the thing I noticed yesterday is I couldn't even see out my front windows because the wind was blowing that way. And... Um, it was a mix of rain and sleet and snow. And so as the water hit the windows, it froze. And so it looked like all the windows on the front side of the house were out of frosted glass. Fascinating. We never had that. I never had that issue in Sisters. So I suspect that the roads are going to be kind of icy for a while. So Valentine's Day... I'm going to start that. Loved by you. I don't know what fabric I'm going to do it on. This is actually done on 36 count weathered shingle linen by R&R. And, &R. and um, yeah, I don't know if I have that, but I'm sure I have something that I'll just substitute. Just substitute it for. Yeah, and they used two skeins of Weeks Dye Work Coal. And I do believe I have that. Yeah. So that is my Valentine start. Then I think I was watching maybe it's Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. Yeah. Maybe that's who I was watching. I just watched so many uh, since I got up this morning that um, I remembered that I had this pattern. What I didn't know was that the trees were books. I, <laughs> I had no idea. But it's a Stone Street Stitchworks, and I bought the PDF called Book House. And... Um, I have to do that for my my younger son. I just have to do that for him. And so I need to get started on that. And I know that I believe Lady Robin S. also did this. So I have to start that. So I am starting. I'm already uh, here. You know, we're into February. I wasn't going to start any new stuff. And I'm already, I was only going to work on my whips. Look at me ramble, ramble, ramble. And I've already got two on the books to start this week. Yeah. So, um, you know, the thing about floss tube and floss tubers is they aren't on their, um, it's not like a business model thing, you know. Everybody, we're all doing it uh, for the fun of it. And that we're seeking connection with other people that love the things that we love. And in this day and age, that can be done around the world, which is incredible during this sheltering in place, that you can still connect with someone on the other side of the world. It, it's just, I mean, it makes my heart sing. And I have been enjoying, now that we're kind of settling a little bit, I mean, there's still tons of stuff to do around here. But we're kind of fitting in our fun times in between, you know, G's playing the guitar, and, and he's setting up his workshop down in the garage with his woodworking tools. I'm very excited about that. But, um, so I'm... I'm finally getting back into floss tubes, watching floss tubes, and getting enabled by floss tubes. And I so love my Sassenach stitcher. Uh, I mean, I love it, her outlook 
on life. You know, just how she looks at her stitching, how she thinks of her dogs. I mean, it's just, I find, and the terminology that she uses for certain things is so lovely. It's just so lovely that I could just listen to her all day. I could listen to her all day. But um, also, um, Alma's little stitches. And I'll put the list in the description box of what I've been up to this week. Um, but she mostly does full coverage. It's mostly full coverage pieces, which I have never done. But after watching her, and I had that gridded fabric that she showed, and I thought, you know, I, I, I'm going to start, I'm going to start one full coverage this year. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. And there's some places in this house that I have, like, I have not hung anything on this entire wall because that's going to have cross stitch on it. And I wasn't sure what cross stitch. Get to that later. But I also have a couple walls downstairs that probably will stay empty for a, a couple years, two, three years before I get the cross stitch done that I want to hang there. Like, I want a whole uh, sampler wall. You know, I want a sampler wall in the family room. And so that wall's just going to stay blank till I actually stitch a sampler. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. One has to actually stitch a sampler. Yeah. So I said, well, I would like to do start a full coverage this year. So I have three full coverage patterns that I downloaded. And since doing, um, I was one of the early interviews of um, floss tube interviews that Sambri Stitches uh, does every Sunday. You know, I think I was, I, I know I was in probably the first 20, you know, that she did. And um, when she asked, one of the questions she asked is, if you could go to one uh, place, a uh, fictional place in in a fictional place in the world. That makes absolutely no sense, does it? Makes absolutely no sense. But one fictional place, where would you choose? And I chose Hogsmeade. Um, I wanted to go, um, you know, have a happy hour at Hogsmeade. Um, and so I remembered that I downloaded PDFs of these patterns countrymagicstitch.com and one of the full coverage pieces was Hogsmeade. They were designed in the form of those graphic posters. I'm going to start it. I'm going to start it this year. Yeah. I think that's going to be so cool. Full coverage piece. A little bit scary. Yeah, I know it's a little bit scary to me. But, um, I think it'll be a good one. I think it'll be a good one. Yeah. So, I already, from one morning of watching Floss Tube, I'm going to be starting three new projects. I'm telling you. The pandemic has nothing on the virus of stitching after watching Floss Tube. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually more contagious. Yeah. But I don't know about you, but I have a hard time stitching on things when I don't know where they're going to go. I know it's a peculiar, a compu a peculiar malady. And, um, but it is, I accept it, it is who I am. And I suddenly got this thought in my head that my um, Renato Perlin trees could go right over there, right over the bed, right there. That that would be a perfect spot for them. And 
all of a sudden, I'm all excited about that stitch. And I started stitching it in hand. So there's, a, and besides the fact that it is, I would have to do it on a Q-snap to do it on my, frame but I think I'm just going to continue in hand but just so you remember where I was last time. of course it's all wrinkled and folded up oh oh, oh 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 yeah so I'm going to I'm all excited now to get back to stitching this because I know exactly where it's going to go it's kind of funny how that it works in my brain if I I'm not sure what's going where it's going to go. I have a hard time with being motivated. But if I know exactly where it's going to go and there's an empty wall for it to go on. Yeah. So, and I'm just the way I do this in hand is I use these little red clips from my quilting days that have worked, you know, I just roll it up and then clip it there and then I'm doing in hand stitching like this. Yeah. So now I'm excited to get going on that so you may see some good progress on that. I have not done much uh, anymore since uh, last time on Leo but he is looking nice and this is on the scroll frame that came with my Elan frame. And uh, that's that. And then let me think, what else? Oh, and then on the Elam frame, using a um, Q-snap, <gasps> brain fart, Q-snap, I am working away on my gnomes. And I am at the bottom half of this stitch. And I'm very motivated to get it done because I want to put it on the front of my red uh, crafter's um, Yazzie bag. And you will see that uh, I'll show you how I attach that. Um, I have an idea uh, of how I want to do it. So that's going to be fun. And I'm finding that I'm somewhat of a monogamous stitcher in the evening. My evening stitch has turned into gnome time. Um, that's opposed to uh, Eastern time, uh, Midwestern time, West time, <laughs> gnome time uh, in the evening because I, I can taste the end. You know how that is? You taste the end. And I so want to put it on that red um, Yazzie bag because I think it's going to be absolutely adorable. But the really exciting thing that happened this week is I got this package from the Fat Quarter Shop. Now, the Fat Quarter Shop has asked me uh, to participate in a stitch along. And, you know, I, I was really hesitant to do it because... Uh, and I haven't done it before because of that hesitancy of, oh, I've got so much to do. I've got so much to do. And, and I need to get something finished first. But really, why am I putting these rules on myself? I have no idea. So I decided this time, because of the project, to jump in on it. And the reason, the number one reason, is I really wanted to try the um, Aurifil thread for cross-stitching. I've heard different reviews on it, the Aurifloss, and I kind of wanted to just try it myself. And so um, the, this particular Prim Aurifloss is by Lori Holt. Be in my bonnet, and we all, I mean, you know the packaging. I mean, just let me say, just let me digress a little bit. The floss comes in this cute little box, and then when you slide the box open, 
there's two more cute little boxes. And each box has uh, the floss in this lovely little arrangement on wooden spools. I can't wait. I can't wait to try this floss. I've been wanting to do it. And so they convinced me that I needed to do it. And um, so I'll tell you um, how I like it. And you know me. I know uh, uh, I'll be telling you the truth of how I like it. The pros and the cons of... Oh, i got to get it back in its cute little box. There we go. Then uh, the fabric that I chose for the project was... Um, this will be interesting because I've not done this. Um, it's a 25-count Lugana vintage cloth by B in my bonnet. So I got that. That sure feels like a big piece of cloth. And then the package, not the package, the pattern. The patterns, I mean the floss, the aura floss, because I wanted to try it, and then the pattern, because I really wanted it for embellishing the front of my Yazzie bag was this one. Isn't that cute? I mean, it's so cute. So, it looks like, I mean, when I look at the vintage cloth, that they, uh, and you can choose different cloths when you go online and if you wanted to stitch along with this, you can choose different cloths. They do Ada, um, it, it, you know, different colors and all of that. But um, it's going to be fun to uh, see. It, it doesn't look like a, like a, um, what is it? A, like when you go to a Thai restaurant, they ask you your level of hotness, one through five. Five being it's going to burn the inside of your brain out. Well, this doesn't look like a five cross stitch. You know, like it's going to be so hard. It looks like a very doable, cute, you know, Lori Holt, be in my bonnet design that's going to be fabulous on the front of my Yazzie bag. And since this all couldn't travel alone, so I was looking in uh, at the rest of the cross stitch. Danger, danger. Um, and the fact that I'm doing the hashtag monthly horny sell, I um, bought two more patterns. Um, this one because I just really, you know, I'm surprised I don't have this. If I have this, oh, I'm going to be so embarrassed. But love is in the air. And it's just little ornament stockings that you hang. And, you know, I, I need some more ornament patterns. <laughs> So I thought this would be a fun thing to add to my um, monthly orange cell. And then I even got another one. This one's Plum Street Samplers, Noah's Christmas Art 2. Um, and there were just some cute little ornaments. And one of them has a beehive. I mean, really, I had to get it. I had to get it. I mean, sometimes you have no control over that finger that says choose, choose, press, press, pay, pay. You know, I mean, you have no control over it. I know I said I wasn't going to buy. I lied. I lied. My sister and I used to say to each other when we were kids, you lie like a skunk. I don't even know what that means, but we used to say it to each other. You lie like a skunk, you know, and and so I did. I did to all of the people who are counting on me in Floss Tube Land to hold the line. I lie like a skunk. Yeah, 
and I shopped. But see, the problem is, is I'm being enabled by other people. Yeah, it's not my fault. And even so much so that I was listening to a podcast. I love podcasts. You know, I love to read. I love audiobooks. I love podcasts. And one of the podcasts I follow, and I have the app on my phone, one of the podcasts I follow is the TED Talks. You know, you know that. Um, so, I am... Um, <laughs> the... Last week's TED Talk. Let me just say this. This is how a TED Talk connects to Cross Stitch. So I'm putting this out as a public service announcement that you can be infected by a large, a, a big swath of things in this world. And TED Talks is one of them. Because I'm just minding my own business in the beehive, so I went away listening to uh, the TED Talk from last week, which, call, which was called, It Takes Time. It Takes Time. So, if you go, you have to. You just have to go listen to that episode. It was chocked full of wonderfulness. Wonderfulness. Uh, on so many different levels. You know, so the TED Talk, It Takes Time. Um, was addressing the fact that, you know, we're a, a, a culture uh, of immediate gratification. And, and this whole um, COVID thing has proved how little uh, we can handle it when we can't have it, you know. But it wasn't just about that. Uh, this is the fun thing about TED Talks. So... There's different segments to it. I know. Hang in there. Hang in there. I'm getting to it. Uh, there's different segments in each talk. And in one of the segments, she was talking to a zoologist who had fallen in love with sloths. You know the animal sloths? They are the slowest animal on the planet. And... Her whole conversation about the sloths, I mean, I literally just about peed my pants because it was so funny. It was so funny, but in learning about sloths on the TED Talk, their metabolism is so slow that that's why they survive. You know, um, where other animals would eat a poisonous leaf and die, a sloth eats a poisonous leaf and lives because it takes him all day to eat one leaf. Sloths have been electrocuted and survived, run over, survived, lost limbs, survived, because their metabolism is so slow. And um, I was thinking, well, holy moly, I've been working my whole life adult life to make my metabolism faster because I thought that was healthier. Hence, I ran marathon. I, I you know, any kind of running race in my, my world, I was running it and um, trying to get my metabolism faster so I could lose some weight. And here I find out that the reason a sloth has lived so long has evolved is because their metabolism is slow, right? Okay, so what does this have to do with cross stitch? I immediately called up Acorns and Threads and said, I need the Plum Street sampler pattern for sloths. I did. I did. I need sloths in my life. I get them. But you have to listen to the TED Talk because 
I'm telling you, there was one point in that TED Talk, I nearly peed my pants. I laughed so hard. And hence, something that has absolutely zero to do with cross-stitch made me buy a cross-stitch pattern. Yeah. Mea culpa. Mea culpa. Mea culpa. Okay. We'll hang in there. We'll see you the next time around. And know that... Um, Anything I promised, I take back. I take back. I take back. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just love it all. And I hope you do too. I hope you find some fun things to do with cross stitch and stop making rules for yourself. Every time I make a rule for myself, I think I do it so I can break it. I was always that kind of child. Yeah. So hang in there. We'll see you. We'll see you the next time. And enjoy your stitching.